Now, one of the new frontiers, if you will, of, of um, looking at behavioral genetics, in other words, the combination of behavior and linking it in with um, the influence of genetics itself, is the idea of molecular um, genetics. And essentially, uh, we have forever really gone from the behavior, which is actually a, a, a macroscopic view of things, down to um, uh, down to how do genes uh, impact that. And so um, it, it really is, uh, you have two different approaches. One, you have a top-down approach, which says, um, do genes influence behavior? And I think we can say, well, yeah, with a reasonable amount of insurance, genes do lead to certain kinds of behavior. Um, on the other hand, the question is more bottom up, is, uh, and that's where genetics, uh, molecular genetics, come come into play, is <clears throat> um, what specific genes we're talking about? What specific genes? We're starting with the genes themselves um, impact various outcomes in terms of behavior. So. In this case, and that's why we call it top-down, is that actually, technically, we start with behavior, that's the top-down, and we reason our way down to what genes are part of the, the scenario. In this case, we start with genes themselves and say, what, um, um, how do these specific genes, not just generally genes, all right? And it's not Levi's or anything like that, but it's, it's not general uh, global understanding of genes, but we're talking about specific genes and how do they impact behavior, okay? So we're, in this case, we're talking about the bottom up. So in a sense, we've got the, uh, the genes down here, whoops, went too far. Uh, we have the various genes down here, and we look at this particular gene and say, does this lead to some behavior that we can actually make a connection to? And if we can, then if we make, make changes here, will it reflect in the behavior? And so that's why we talk about the bottom-up approach, is that the movement is from genes up to behavior rather than behavior down to genes. And that, that is a key component of when we talk about molecular genetics themselves. And, and you got to understand that genes never act in solo. They always act in, uh, in tandem in, um, in an orchestra. So it's not solo. Um, it, it's not that, but it is in an orchestra um, where they, they function together in orchestrated uh, impact uh, within the person and within the body itself. Um, and like I said, this is, this is where a lot of excitement is being focused because if we can make an impact at the genetic level, then what happens at the macro level of behavior itself? Um, the, the, the worst part about it, actually, is how far does it actually go? Because if we can begin to identify um, genes and what they produce, um, then the next question is, is that if I can identify it, then can I manipulate it? And if I can manipulate it, then can, uh, if I can do that, then that means then that I can begin to have, um, um, uh, what do I want to say, customized kids, if you will. Um, and increasingly, um, we saw that even in China, where we had uh, abortions occur, selective abortions occur, to get rid of women, um, because they were identified as women, and they were aborted in order to uh, um, orchestrate, 
in order to manipulate um, an entire uh, generation that is very heavy, heavily men versus women and, and not a general 50-50 split, although we don't have a general. Um, so there's an entire generation of women, at least in China, that were lost as a result of this. And that's, uh, that is the dangerous, slippery slope, if you will, uh, of what we're talking about when we talk about this kind of thing. Um, the, the, other, the other aspect here is the idea of really um, heritability and um, what actually uh, we can estimate um, the heritability aspect. And, and, and what that essentially means is what percentage um, or to what extent um, ability, uh, to what extent uh, we can estimate a trait and the variation can be attributed to specific genes. And so, um, you know, when we talk about 50%, for example, um, it doesn't mean that the other 50% is, is uh, attributable somewhere else. We don't have that kind of precision. Um, but the, the key to keep in mind uh, in this whole idea is that there are certain things that are highly heritable, inherited, or heritable, that's another way to put it, and there are other things that actually impact the heritability. And uh, the, you, you really, even with heritability, you can't diminish the impact of social context. In, in turning on or turning off, accentuating or de-emphasizing um, can't be underestimated because of how um, sensitive we are um, in, in our social context estimated. So um, the, the, the last thing I want to emphasize, even as we're talking about this, is uh, the idea which I've already communicated to you and I'll communicate once again, um, is, is the idea of interaction and its effect. And this comes into play even here. Uh, and we generally can reduce down to genes and, and environment. Um, and then when you actually combine those two together, you have something far greater than the, just the addition of these two things. And that's what interaction is about, and that's what leads to a fair amount of unpredictability, even when we're talking about uh, various aspects of that.